So, if you took part in my Thought Park Planet Coaster competition, you're probably very aware of what this area is. Of course, it is the back of Swarm Island, and I held a competition recently, it ended on May the 3rd, and hopefully this isn't coming out in about four years to declare a winner, but we'll see how that goes. And of course, the competition was to build Thought Park's next coaster on this island here. There was a lot of entries that were a bit like, oh, okay, you've done that. Uh, there was a, there was one Rita entry, which Archie Deves, I hate you. <laughs> I think in the end I had just over 110 submissions, which is just mental. I, I was expecting about 40 max, and I ended up getting, like, how does that even happen? But there you go, I really appreciate it. And yes, I may as well preface it now. I do have a green screen behind me. So, look at that. That's really cool. I know there's going to be so many things in my Discord server from that high, but oh god. So of course, this is the Thought Park Planet Coaster competition results, and here is how this video will be laid out. So as mentioned at the start, this will only cover the top 15 submissions out of the 120 or so I received. The bottom 5 of that top 15 will receive 10 to 20 seconds of coverage, with me going through a little review on their area and ride. So quickly after that, we'll reach the top 10. The bottom five of that top 10, I'll be giving 30 to 40 seconds of coverage with a little bit of their POVs involved too. The top five will be showcased in a full walkthrough as much as I can possibly cover and also a POV to go with it. I'll be giving my full thoughts in that entire segment. And if you didn't make this top 15, as said, I did look at your creation still and majority of them were very good. So. I appreciate all the support, and ranking this top 15 was very difficult, so <laughs> cut me some slack. Anyway, I think it's time we begin the top 15. At number 15, we have a GCI wooden coaster called Ares by Luca Giacovi. This is in the area called Ragnarok and it features loads of different effects and some great theming with even custom lift support. The station building, also very well done, along with the entire area itself. At number 14, we have a B&M dive coaster called Vulcan by Kieran Dees. This dive coaster has over a 200 foot drop and is 130 foot tall above ground. The theming in this area was very well done and it fits well with the skyline. In 13th place, we have another GCI wooden coaster named Sandstorm by Slovis3606. This coaster is really well custom supported. It fits in such a compact space and it really does fit the island well. And the layout itself is a great fit for Thought Park. At number 12, we have an RMC topper track called Rust by Ben underscore F and Logical Dodger. This ride is extremely unique and has a very different style layout to it and it looks great at night. Some of the effects and some of the theming lit up looks brilliant. At number 11 is an RMC T-Rex called Jet Force by Dan the Man. This was a, one of the first to get sent in I think and it does have a really solid layout, smooth, it interacts with a set piece and also goes through a woodland-esque tree setting. And now we move to the top 10. So at number 10 we have another RMC called Iron Wolf by K1. This ride features the largest drop on any hybrid and reaches speeds of almost the same speed as stealth. The layout is very good and the ride itself is very smooth. Also it looks great off-ride. They have these two massive logos on one, the side of a wave turn and one on the lift hill and it looks very nice. Not to mention the entire lift hill and mid-course brake run are custom supported. Very good job on this one. We have another GCI wooden coaster coming in at number 9, Thunder Run by 1985 Stu Discord. This is a very unique ride in itself. It has a very different theme to what you would usually see. It has a nice set piece at the top of the lift hill. There are various points where it has been custom supported as well, and the whole area itself really fits that island. And of course, the on-ride experience, a very good layout, some good forces, and also some really good 
interactions. At number eight, we have another GCI wooden roller coaster called The Effect by Pluto. The area itself was really unique to what else I've seen. It was multi-layered and just followed the terrain really well. And the coaster itself also did that too. Custom supports all over the place as well. You can see on the lift support, very unique to what you'd usually see on a GCI. And it's just a very smooth, enjoyable ride and has a very good layout to it. Not to mention it also has an inversion which we know Merlin would like to mark it off pretty, pretty well. At number seven we have another RMC, Furix by Oli SM. This coaster goes so well on the skyline and the custom supports on the lift hill look brilliant. The ride itself, the layout is very different to your usual style RMC, features all the airtime and the whippy transitions you'd want from one and in general, the theme of it, although it's very loose, it fits the area and the ride well. And there's something um, a, bit, a, bit, a bit questionable about this one as well. At number six, we have a very unique one, a Mac Big Dipper called Containment by Brad. This ride and its area is very well done and is very unique to what I've seen across the board. The buildings and the theme work so well together. The colour scheme is very different and just it shines so much on the skyline. And the layout itself is very much a Mac Big Dipper style layout. It has some really unique elements and it just has such a nice ambience to it night and day. Really good job. It almost made the top five. It was so hard to decide whether to put this in there or not. The top six especially is very interchangeable and this was so close to making it into the top five. At number five, we have a Celtic slash Nordic themed Mac Extreme Spinning Coaster by Deef. Sorry if I've got any pronunciations wrong. Uh, of your names in this video because yeah I'm not the best at pronunciations. It starts off with a 180 degree turn out of the lift hill and then goes down this quite steep drop into the full layout itself. This layout does have, it's, it's very good, like it's not too intense but it also has some really good elements to it such as of course that vertical loop right there. It takes a decent speed, a uh, little overbank into this really good downwards corkscrew or zero g roll and it's incredibly smooth as well. As you can see over here, we even have this show building for a Fright Nights made, which not many people have actually kind of implemented, but it's really nice to see uh, people making space for these Fright Nights mazes. And you can definitely see the area and its theme. Obviously, Celtic slash Nordic theme, and you can definitely see that with the kind of medieval style building with the stone, and of course, this amazing station building. Just look at that, it's like that roof is perfectly curved around the top and of course the coaster goes straight over it uh, once it comes this way. All perfect timing, there we go. Around there, into that downward zero G roll or court screw. It's, it's just a really good layout and a solid area too. We've done that outer banked 180 degree turn. Let's go into the layout. Steep drop into that vertical loop. Again, really good speed and just really smooth as well. Around a little overbank there. Down into probably my favourite element on the ride. So smooth. A nice element here where you pop out and go round outer banked again. Some more outer banked here. And bear in mind, while you're going through this, you are spinning, so it is quite a different kind of ride every time you go on it. At number four, we have Mantus, a B&M flying coaster by Robbie underscore Tice. This coaster just looks amazing with how the theme and the color scheme goes together. It's obviously got some kind of tropical theme. Of course, all these palm trees and nice netting and sort of brownish sandstone-ish rock, if that makes sense. And it just fits the area so well. Of course, the coaster itself, BM Flying Coaster, has such a good layout. Down it comes. Into what would probably be one of the most intense parts of the ride there. Uh, shorter trains as well, uh, six rows, I believe. Um, but still, really nice 
area. It would be such a picturesque coaster as well, just walking in over this bridge here, just to see it in front of you. And yeah, it's just, it looks really nice. Ascending the lift, once again, look to our left, you can see a really nice view of stealth. Uh, this would also complete their lineup really well, having a flying coaster, obviously already having a wing and an invert. To add this to it would be really good. Into the pretzel loop. Really nice interaction with the water. Nice water effect down below. Up into a nice zero G roll. And a corkscrew there. Down. That bit would be very intense. And a quick mid course. Still really high up though, so it does keep a lot of its speed into the rest of the layout. Nice back to back inversion there. And into the break run. At number three, yes, we're into the top three now, is a 4D coaster by Dan Thorpe called Symbiosis. This creation is so unique. It's something, I think this was the only submission that was a 4D coaster. It's, it's so smooth, the theming around it just fits, especially Swarm really well it's obviously called symbiosis the swarm that kind of name here and this is another one of those ones where they've made a hang on where is it they've made a separate area for a fright night's maze but let me tell you inside there is very good and if you want to check out the map for yourself i will put the top five or maybe even top ten as links in the description. And this is one of those ones that is very storyline based. There's a lot of signs in the queue line that would obviously, if that was real life, translate into maybe videos and stuff uh, shown in the queue line. And it really does have a great storyline. So once again, if you wanna come read them for yourself completely, go check it out in the description. It is a really good all round coaster. It's a very in-depth story. It's basically about the swarm mutating into something bigger, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, it's it's a really good all round story driven coaster. As you can see, system override there. This is a really nice theming piece in the queue line. There you go, here's the station. Really well themed, as said. See, now I would give you the seated view, but all you're going to see is that. Well, I guess we could do that. I guess we could do that. As you can see, we've gone in through that inversion there, down this way, flipping over, down towards the ground. Oh, you just lose track of where you're going. This would, if this was a real coaster, it would honestly be so insane. Not a, a tank effect there. Fire effect, I could see, spinning all over the place, and into the break run. As said, if this was a real co-star, that would be a very high-rated ride amongst the UK theme park industry, I guess. The, the custom supports, fully custom supported. The, as I said, the profiling on the track is great, and also so is the spinning of it. Obviously, that is custom programmed. You can't just sit there and have it spin, I'm pretty sure. It's insane job. At number two, we have a B&M Mega Coaster. It's it's like a hyper, but it's not 200 foot tall, and it's just a bit under. That is called Echoradium by DJB Coasters and Theme Park LB. This entire coaster and area is just insane. And basically the storyline for this ride is that there is a city called Neutropolis, as you can see in front of us, and this Echoradium rock you can see around it uh, was supposed to keep the inhabitants of Neutropolis safe from the swarm, but they were too worried about the swarm, so this rock just kind of took over the entire place. And as you can see in here, it's all through these buildings, and it's very well done. It matches the storyline completely, like perfectly. And obviously the coaster goes straight through this entire area, interacts with the area so well. And as you can see here, the main 
drop on the ride up against stealth back there and the main sign for the ride as well that is such a nice entrance sign how that's been done and how that was planned out is it looks really really good um, but as we head into the indoor queue line after the baggage hold um, as you can see we've got this classroom in here and you can start to see some more of it going a bit wrong go around here scanning the rock and then in the next scene is taken over that classroom that we saw before it's this queue line is so perfectly laid out with the storyline and everything it is just a brilliant job on this one down that first drop nice interaction with the water there nice pop of airtime it is basically a B&M hyper but not a hyper it's really good dives down airtime once again this would probably be the main focused airtime coaster in this country and it would just work so well at Thorpe nice wave turn esque thing there I'm really bad with element names if you can't tell already nice quick pop of air there once again that's over the queue line and then we have a little bit of a mid course here as well as I'm pretty sure we back down and go into the final break run there and once again as I mentioned with all of them really good transfer track as you can see there transfer track and maintenance bay sorry and yeah just a big well done because this creation is absolutely insane So, as mentioned before on my other social medias, the person who does win this competition will receive one of either a black or a white Digital Dan t-shirt as shown on screen right now and £20 to spend at either the Alton Towers online shop or if they want to save it for later use it on the Thought Park online shop when that does open. And the winner at number one is an RMC called Aries. Again, we had one at 15 called Aries by Theme Park Wirral. This ride on the skyline between Stealth, obviously Tidal Wave as well, and Swarm fits so perfectly. You can see the shaping of the drop going down into the rest of the layout. The structure is massive and it just fits perfectly onto that island we enter the area right underneath the drop which is obviously very intimidating because it's just massive i'm pretty sure the drop is about 200 feet tall not not 100 sure on that one uh, i'll have a look into the stats afterwards and we enter under this wave turn here this view is the one you load up into and just seeing it go down that drop into that zero g roll coming out and going into this twisted double down that i mentioned before it's just, it's seeing this in real life would, it would definitely probably be my number one in the UK because it's just insane. Along with the planet coaster limitations of smoothing usually mean, well, you can't really smooth coasters in this game. It is quite, like you have to do four meter technique. It's very long to actually get something decently smooth. This coaster is glossy smooth, especially on POV. Around here, Obviously still got these columns, which is a really nice touch as well. Go right up to the track, this little overbank. Right up against it here. Got a bit of a cattle pen, which obviously it's the UK. You've got to have a little bit of cattle pen there. And we go back round here. What a nice view. Just seeing that with all the nicely shaped trees just dotted around. It's just, yeah, it is a insane looking ride i'm gonna say that a lot because yeah it just is and i just like how it's very well kept it's not overgrown it just fits the island very well climb up some stairs into the station it's more of a simplistic station but it again suits the theme so it makes sense and now we hop onto the ride now you'll see what i mean about the smoothness the first drop curves down would be such a good drop and that inversion is just 
insanely smooth, followed by this twisted double down. Banks round to the right, little outer bank there. It's just very RMC-esque, and I just love it. This is probably my favourite point in the ride, how it goes back to this point. It does two back-to-back -back wave turn. Airtime, it's just got full RMC elements in it, yet still is insanely unique. And into the brakes. Like, after that POV, you can probably see what I mean about the smoothness level of it. And the way it goes into the structure and back out again, goes over the paths like this bit. It's just an absolutely brilliant creation. And there you go. That is the winning creation for the Thought Park Planet Coaster competition. As I said, it was very difficult to find a winner. The top three was very close, very, very close. Um, the top five, top six, as mentioned, could have been so interchangeable. And Theme Park Real has won the challenge. So there you go. I hope you guys did enjoy this entire competition phase and this video, I guess. It's probably quite long. Um, I've tried to condense it down as short as I possibly can just to make it so it's more focused about people's creations and going through as many as I can rather than sticking on one person's and then doing about a 10 second review on the other. So hopefully... If you did make the video, then I guess well done. If you didn't, then I apologise. I would have liked to include more, but I kind of can't when it would have taken hours upon end. But there you go. Thank you for watching. Congrats to everyone who made the video, the top 10, top 15, top 5, and of course, Theme Park Real for winning the competition. Uh, if you'd keep an eye on your Discord DMs, I will be contacting you about your prize in the next couple of days or so. Big up to anyone who did submit a creation i have looked at all of them and they were all great in their own way so i really appreciate it thank you for watching and i'll see you all later it's the this, 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 this. Anything I do, I gotta do it with a gang. Spinning my head like a loser.